Welcome to the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. We discuss five questions in about 10 minutes because leaders know how to be concise. I am very excited to welcome my guest today. This is Sean Glaze. He is the CEO of Great Results Team Building out of Atlanta, Georgia. So this is a, a subject that obviously fits very well with what I like to talk about, which is team building and teams in general and leadership. So I am very excited to hear your insights on this. Sean, thank you so much for being on the show today. And what would you like the audience to know about you? And I believe that you have a book coming out here pretty quick. I do. Thanks so much for that intro and teeing it up for me. I am really thrilled to be able to share some hopefully uh, valuable nuggets with your audience today in the brief time that we have. But uh, as a real quick introduction, I am a team culture and team building expert based, as you mentioned, in Atlanta, but I travel around the country working with teams in half and full day team building events that are intentional, not recreational, and in conference keynotes to help to build a far more profitable and positive team culture. And as you mentioned, the most recent book uh, that I have published is Staying Coachable. Obviously, with all of the consistent change that everyone has dealt with, not just in the last 18 months, but certainly moving forward, when there's a little bit of resistance to change or a need to get beyond a frustrating plateau. Staying Coachable offers four powerful questions that are going to help you to not just grow yourself, but to help your team enjoy relentless improvement. Oh, I love that. That's a great and very important part of the team experience. So I'm really excited for you. And even though I haven't read the book yet, because it hasn't come out at the time of this recording, um, certainly endorse what you're teaching and the importance of making sure that we all reach out and give everybody that opportunity to grow with the team and be coachable. So I love that. So congratulations on that uh, publication. Well, let's jump to our questions. The first question, share with the audience an example of collaboration within a team collaboration. You know, one of the reasons that sometimes I'll be hired is, hey, we need more collaboration. And that's because, as you and most leaders know, a lot of times the answer is in the room, it's in the organization, but people aren't sharing that information. And so that becomes a whole lot more ineffective for them to work together. And, and I think the collaboration basically comes down to two things. You have to connect people to a compelling common goal. And you have to connect people to each other because without those two connections, there's no reason for them to reach out and share and request information. And one of the things that I would share with leaders and certainly teammates and conferences and the events that I've been able to, uh, to work with them in is that if you're not asking someone for help every day, then your network is becoming stagnant. That your job is to be vulnerable and to be needy and to be helpful when others are vulnerable and needy. And by you being vulnerable and asking for help, you give others permission to do the same. And I think that's one of the things, especially for young leaders, to not need to be perfect, to not need to know everything. But if you're willing to ask, especially even if it's just asking an opinion or asking advice, that opens the door to better relationships and giving a little more confidence to the people that you're surrounded by. That is a great comment. I really like that of, of constantly asking for help by simply asking for advice. It doesn't need to be super complicated. I love that concept. It's a great concept. Question number two, I hear from other leaders that it can be a challenge to measure engagement. Tell us a little bit about your thoughts. Well, if, if there's a ring, then you're engaged. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. That's a true and, statement. You no, know, engagement is one of those terms. And, and same thing, Sean, you're very familiar, and I know that your leaders are, that engagement is one of those nebulous terms that you see thrown around every year when the Gallup poll comes out and what is the employee engagement and what, how do we measure engagement. And I think engagement, just like culture, is an easy to understand concept that we sometimes make more difficult. I think that engagement is nothing more than how much your people care about the results they're contributing to. And that's on a basketball team. If you look at the end of a bench and somebody's sitting back and not paying attention, they're not engaged because they're not actually caring about the results they're contributing to. They're not contributing to any results. They've actually disengaged themselves because they don't feel a part of. So our job as a leader is how do we make somebody feel a part of something and see the impact of their efforts. I think sometimes we do a poor job as leaders of letting people feel valuable for their contribution because they don't see how what they do is connecting in terms of connecting the dots for them to where the ultimate client or, or the impact is on families and people and outcomes down the line. And the more we can let people feel that they are seen and valued and connected to something that is a compelling common goal, and they feel appreciated as being part of that team, connected to each other, uh, then 
the certainly the amount of engagement goes up. And some of that obviously occurs in the one on one conversations that, that are always important to have on teams. Great comments again. And I really like both questions. The first two questions you've used a key word connections, because that is such a critical part to, to all of it, the team cohesion and collaboration, as well as the uh, the need for engagement and how we can do that. So I great comments. Thank you so much for sharing those. Question number three, based on your experience, Sean, what is one quality of a confident leader? Of a confident leader. I think confidence comes from consistent competence. Mm. And to become consistently competent, you've got to be able to surf those waves of change that every leader is going to go through. And that's why, again, I'm going to plug now something that, you know, in my list of the 10 traits that all winning teammates have in that winning teammates uh, book and message. I used to say that the most important thing somebody can be as a winning teammate is willing to take personal responsibility for team results. That's what leadership was, personal responsibility. What part of my leadership led to this outcome? And I have since, with my most recent book being The Purpose, come to believe that staying coachable that being coachable is the most important trait someone can have. Because if you're coachable, then you can grow into all of the other traits. And being coachable for me very simply means two things, Sean. The first is being coachable means you want to be better. Now, when you ask any crowd that, any audience that, who here wants to be better, every hand goes up because we all want to be better. The people that you coach in your coaching business, they all want to be better. The issue is the second part of the definition because being coachable means you want to be better but it also means you're willing to change. And whether it's in athletics when I was coaching basketball or whether it's in whatever industry with all the business leaders that you and I deal with, the second part is difficult because not everyone, leaders and teammates, is as willing to change as we would like to believe. Very true, very true. It's amazing how many of us think that we want to become something better but aren't willing to put in the effort to get there. It's it's a sad commentary, but it's also a little bit of a wake up call to all of us is the, what are you willing to do to make, to make those changes and be coachable? So great comments. Question number four, is there someone that you would like to recognize that has made an impact in your life? Well, the obvious answer is gonna be my wife and she has made me a far better person than ever I could imagine. But professionally, uh, as regards your audience and what they're going to be able to take away, Sean, I think that the most important conversation I ever had was with an assistant coach. And we're standing in a locker room after my very first season as a head coach. And we had focused all season long on skills and strategy on the X's and O's. And I'd just taken over the program and I was full of enthusiasm and excitement and expectations. And we get to the end of that season and we had lost 21 games of the 26 we had played. It was a 80% failure rate. Most people aren't going to survive that. And I was really frustrated and I'm standing with my back against the wall and my assistant coach, as some of the kids began to leave the locker room after the game, he noticed, as I noticed, that they were walking out one by one as individuals. And they weren't walking out as individuals because we had lost that last game. We lost that last game and 20 others because all season long, I hadn't focused on those connections that now is my passion to share with leaders. We had let them walk around as individuals all year and, and we had neglected the culture that would have allowed our strategy to succeed. And so that second season and every year since, the most important thing that I can share with leaders is the importance of culture. And what my assistant said to me in the midst of that really pivotal moment in my key, uh, coaching career was, as they're walking out, he said, coach, if we want a better team, we're going to have to build better relationships. And he was so unbelievably right. And he had such an incredible impact, not just on the trajectory of our program at the time, but on my life and what I do now, which is sharing the importance of culture with leaders like those you speak to. It's really an insightful comment for a number of reasons. First of all, I admire and compliment you for having the humility to say, I've got an assistant coach here that has a great idea and to be willing to implement it. A lot of folks, and this is a leadership principle as well, they got to be willing to listen to those that are there to help provide some support. Right. And so you were you were living the very thing that you were preaching, which I think is phenomenal, which is that you were, you were willing to listen and uh, find out ways to become better. And it wasn't just all about you and that you've got all the answers and that you were um, you know, not going to listen to an assistant coach. I think that's fantastic. But 
thank you for recognizing also your wife. I think that that's great. Anytime that we can recognize any family member who does, in fact, standing over there with a gun pointed at. Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not, but he's <laughs> but uh, anyway, well, very fortunate. Well, and, and all of us are when we have those great relationships, whether they're family or otherwise, they can help make a, a really positive impact in our lives. So thank you for recognizing both of those individuals. Okay, our last question. This is kind of a fun question, but tell us a little bit about your first job. My very first job. Now, my first job, as I mentioned, my first professional job was as that coach. And in that very first head coaching job, where I learned the importance of connection and culture over strategy. But my very first job, when you go back a little bit further in the, uh, in the calendar, I was actually a lifeguard. And oh. one of the things that I think has been a recurring theme throughout my careers is I've always found a way to try and do something to serve and assist others. And I think that when others are in trouble, your job is to help to get them up above water and back to safety. And I think that's the job sometimes of leaders is what can you do when you see one of those teammates struggling, whether it's personally or professionally, to give them the support, to give them that uh, compassion that empathy allows and to be aware enough and to care enough to pay attention to see those moments when your people need you to support them. I, again, I'm, I'm impressed that you found that connective tissue between lifeguard, coaching, team building, and all of it is that you want to help people. So I love that. Thanks for, for sharing all of that, all of your answers, as well as your first job and how it connects with what you're doing right now, however many years later. I think that's fantastic. Sean, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I've really enjoyed this. How can people find you? I would love for your audience to reach out. Let me be a resource of some kind to them and their teams. Obviously, with Staying Coachable, the most recent book, would love for them to pick up a copy or an ebook or audio book. The four questions and the powerful takeaways, I think, are going to be so useful to teams across industries. But uh, specifically in terms of website, they can find me at greatresultsteambuilding.com. On Twitter and Instagram, I'm at Lead Your Team. And again, I'm available, uh, whether it's just to share a conversation or advice, or whatever resources I can. My job is to help team leaders be better than I was when I was in those same shoes. Fantastic. This is Sean Richards with the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. For more ideas, go to teamengagementpodcast.com. And we welcome also for those who are listening to the podcast to subscribe to the podcast. Or if you're watching the episode on YouTube, we'd love for you to subscribe to that as well. Thanks so much for joining us today and have a great day.